Well, for a partnership, this is the darndest thing I ever saw. <laughs> Both of you are sticking guns in each other's faces. This Listen, tells us something. The business world is not as easy as it looks, I've got to tell you. These two guys, uh, they had a few falling out. Now, it's, um, it's an odd little scene, that. And uh, I remember when I read it, it didn't seem like a lot. And it seems to be a favorite scene of a lot of people mm -hmm. see the film. I think it's just because so much of the tension of the film is under the surface. They're very close to it. And I think people respond to that because the audience is deliciously a half a beat ahead all the time. And then when they least expect it, they're a half a beat behind. And it's like any good entertainment, you know? It's always fun to go for a roller coaster ride, and this certainly is that. I'm glad you mentioned roller coaster ride because watching you perform, I think, is like going for a ride. It's going to be some dips and dives and swerves, and we're yeah. not sure where we're going sometimes. Well, well that's, what, that's what I try to achieve. I mean, I've, I've always been loath to, to be a participant in any formula venture. And a few times I've fallen prey to mm, misrepresentation of what a project's intentions were and so on. But I very carefully choose to work with certain people, like Brian, like mm -hmm. John Flynn, like John Daly. And I've found that uh, it guarantees almost certain success every time if you really are careful about your compatriots. And, and, and in this case, uh, we couldn't have been luckier. Indeed. And at this point in your career, audiences are coming to your pictures with a special anticipation now. I don't know if it's can he top this so much as they just have so much fun watching you. Well, I appreciate your saying that, and um, if I have anything to say about it, I'm going to top it every time, you know. <laughs> but yet you've also said success is tougher. You said it's windier at the top of the mountain. Yeah, I think it's tougher because you get yourself involved in corollary issues which are not as essentially fulfilling as, for me, filmmaking is. I mean, I don't really care about talking to the lawyers at the f financier's office and all that stuff. I mean, you know, it's just... You all said that you became an actor to avoid talking I, to uh, I became an actor literally to avoid five gray suits in a room. And, you know, unfortunately, when you get involved in a film, which is usually a five or ten or fifteen million dollar venture, uh, all those suits and power ties appear and then you're, you know, you're doomed. You know, you're sitting talking to these guys about the stuff that has nothing to do with filmmaking. But, on the other hand, you need them to make the film. And, and if they are committed and caring supporters of film. It makes it a delight, like John Daly is, for example. I mean, a real street filmmaker. He really cares about making movies, and he comes up with the money to do it and puts his money where his mouth is, which is fabulous. And we get to make good films, like Salvador, like Best Seller, like The Boost, which I'm about to start, and I'm sure will be good. What will it be within you that will keep you from falling lure to that siren song of the power ties, as you put it? Well, I think it's just that I've been you know, I'm like the old soldier, you know, when all is said and done, I always know, unfortunately, that there's going to be another war, and mm -hmm. finally I, you know, the, the smell of cordite and napalm, I suppose, is in my blood now. Somehow I just can't imagine that it's ever going to be easy, and I'd probably be bored if it were. It's interesting, that remark seems to imply that the filmmaking experience of something like, say, a Salvador, maybe has gotten into your blood. It's, uh, it's affected maybe your life a little bit. Well, actually, on the other hand, I've had experiences that were literally idyllic and the result was uh, as a whole, as a venture, phenomenal. Um, I did, you know, the Hallmark production of, of Promise this past year and I mean it was a delight from the beginning to end. I mean Hallmark, as you know, is, well, I don't know if you do know this or not, I mean obviously they're a great corporation for their business, but they are the single greatest production entity you could ever work for. They are supportive, they stay out of your way artistically, their approvals are genuine. Their handshake is as good as gold. Um, well, those shows go back to 1950. It's yeah, a I know that. Track but record, but so I that have helps. to tell you something. People with long track re records sometimes lose their way, and they are stronger than ever. And you very rarely hear me uh, espousing the charms and and uh, and and qualities of of the producerial. Mm -hmm. uh, entity, uh, because usually they're pretty awful people, but in the case of Hallmark, for example, um, a production that could have been just another movie of the week, disease of the week, uh, piece of trash, turned out to be, f for my taste, one of the finest pieces of television ever produced, and I think mm -hmm. finally one of the greatest pieces of, of cinematic art produced in this country in years and years. I mean, I nothing to do with my involvement. I mean, I'm just saying as an objective observer, the commitment was extraordinary on their part, and, and it made a big difference. So it doesn't always have to be blood and guts. You know, mm -hmm. I wish it were more like it were working for Hallmark. I wish they produced everything I ever did. You Apparently, know? you've heard from a lot of viewers. Yeah, there was a lot of support, and I think a lot of, 
a lot of people felt that we had reached out to them, really from our hearts, which we did. I mean, it was really a heartfelt venture, and I think they responded by saying that they were touched, and you know, and, and a lot of changes were made. I mean, a lot of people wrote and said, you know, we've we've found we're finding our way out of the darkness thanks to this production. Yeah, and what a wonderful flip side to a role like bestseller or is it there's a vulnerability to your character in promise but yet now that i think about it so too is there in bestseller yeah that's what i hmm. i mean i wouldn't have done i, I wouldn't have, i i wouldn't hmm. have done bestseller actually if had there not been that flip side and and what's so great about the character as he's conceived and i hope as he's executed is that the first 15 minutes you think there's no way Old Woods is going to get himself off the hook on this one i mean this is this guy is just too bad too evil too far gone and then I was loved by the end when they all come out with a little tear in their eyes and, you know, sobbing and, you know, cheering for this guy. I think, yeah, it, it's a long stretch to go from that ignominious beginning to this rather noble end. And which now I that I think reveal. about it, uh, that's how we all feel after a roller coaster well, ride, too. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Pleasure <laughs> to meet you again. I'm with James Woods in Los Angeles. He's in Best Seller. And I'm with KCTV5.